take a look at the Grunau chassis again. It's been a while. See if we can get this thing playing again. Looking at the underside of the uh, Grunau chassis, looks uh, pretty clean, some rubber wiring. Looks like we've got the original wax caps. A paper cap replacement uh, here, down in this location. Still got the old dog bone resistors. Really not many resistors in this particular uh, set. An old bias cell located here. I'll re-engineer that and probably just uh, eliminate that and leave the holder in place. And you can see the old electrolytic there. I'll remove it and uh, place a new can on or restuff that can or possibly even mount the electrolytics underneath. We've got plenty of room underneath the chassis for sure to work with. I'd already removed the uh, line cord. Let me do some basic tests and uh, just uh, see what we're in store for. Make sure the uh, power transformer DC resistance looks good. Do a few other uh, tests and I'll start getting the tubes removed. Uh, document my findings and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks in advance for following the series. Go and do a quick check on the primary of the power transformer. Not sure what's on and off. Maybe this switch here. There we go. The on off. A little flaky, as you can see. Hopefully that's just some dirty uh, contacts in here we can clean. If not, we'll replace the switch if needed. Let me go ahead and flip this thing around. And you can see that beautiful dial. Let me go ahead and get the tubes removed and document those. We'll compare that to the schematic at some point. Not much uh, surface rust on the chassis itself. Looks like I will need to take the uh, tuning condenser off and uh, clean it. Looks like where we have most of the uh, rust and uh, crud. First tube was just dangling from the uh, grid wire coming off of uh, one of the IF transformers. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, there it is, a 6K7G. And we've got a Type 80 rectifier. Again, I have not pulled the uh, schematic for some time on the receiver. Located back here, closest to the uh, power transformer, which makes sense. My guess, probably audio to you. 6L6. Loose here at the base. 6L6GA. There we go. Just a little stubborn there. Pretty cool. Sullivan's auto and radio service. North Main Street in uh, Georgetown. October 13th, 1941. Always cool to uh, see what you can find inside of these things. Looks like a 6Q7G.
pretty cool. Another one from the same uh, period of time, same location. Six Alpha Eight G. A little loose at the base there as well. And one more to go. And I'm missing the tube shield for this one. Must have uh, got it in the box over here. Another one there tested probably or replaced October 13th, 1941. And I don't see the uh, tube type here at my angle. We'll just refer back to the schematic later for this one. It's probably underneath the uh, label there. So a six tuber counting the rectifier tube. Let me go ahead and grab my tube socket adapter, plug it into the Type 80 back here in the back. Slide this up. At this location, we'll test the uh, 5 volt filament or heater winding for the transformer in addition to the uh, high voltage side of the transformer. We'll see if we can locate the uh, center tap as well since the Type 80 is a, a full wave rectifier. These things come in real handy at times. See if we can capture this on camera. We'll look at uh, the filament one to four. See if I can keep my hands out of the way. Point four, point five. That's typically what you would find for the filament side. Let's go ahead and look across the high voltage winding, two to three, the plates. And at least the high voltage side, again, not from center tap back, is um, showing good. 464 ohms or 0.464K. Let's see if I can find the uh, center tap location in just a bit. Let's see if we can get the other tube adapter here back in the audio socket. It doesn't have a tube shield on it and check the 6.3 volt filament side. Let's see what we have there. Let's see if I can get my meter to stay up here. Two to seven. for the heater string. Flip the light off for a minute. So we're probably okay there. Let me flip this thing back around and see if I can find the center tap of the transformer. Okay, got lucky and identified quickly the center tap. Most of the time you'll find the center tap winding will come out of the transformer at the same location as the high voltage sides. I had a couple conductors here back in this area. I'll try to zoom in here from a different camera angle in just a minute follow these back and look at the tie points which is back here kind of out of view so again we're going to be clockwise looking at uh, pin one here pin number two our first plate and we're 241 which is almost half of what we read across the entire High voltage winding and 223. Again, this would be the most outer winding at this location. 
you can see it has the highest amount of DC resistance so more wire used should be equal turns but again more wire used so just a basic test there I think it's going to be fine we'll do some more due diligence later on see if I can zoom in here I'll show you the center tap location right there just knobs and screws some of the fastener hardware that was removed to get the chassis out of the cabinet so we we'll definitely need to look for another tube shield If I'm seeing things correctly, I think I can just remove these two fasteners here with some grommets in place. And I can remove the entire dial assembly after removing the main fasteners underneath as well. This appears to be one. And I'm sure there's another hidden somewhere, possibly. And you can see the grounding straps at these two locations as well. And of course, all the other connections to the three sections of the tuning condenser. Or maybe just two underneath and the one on top. And that's a better look at the two fasteners I was trying to show. Looks like these two locations for the tuning condenser on the underside of the chassis. The green lead running back over to the band switch. And the front section, or closer to the front, the middle section, a small jumper back to this terminal strip, back to this green wire, as well the rubber wire going back to the band switch the one fastener and the two copper ground strips. The copper straps will be a little difficult to solder back to the chassis for me. So I'm going to just cut those back a bit then I'll solder the straps back together and the dial light connection points And slip this around. And I believe one more connection point back to this front section of the tuning condenser is all that remains going down to the uh, band switch. Let's see if I can pull the entire assembly out now. Well, that was easy enough. Looks like dust on the chassis. A little bit of crud to clean up. Nothing major. Let's see if I can get these grommets replaced with something suitable. And I'll get these old E caps off as well. At this location, this location. Just finished placing one turn of painter's tape here on the can. Just use my uh, tubing cutters and uh, cut this thing open in this area. This thing's very lightweight. I can tell it's a dry electrolytic, and of course that's obvious. And I'll just go ahead and hold the uh, tubing cutters in my hand. Just rotate the can.
what's left of the electrolytic. I'll clean the uh, can up, top and bottom. Try to leave the uh, nomenclature on here. Just clean up around that area. Got cleaned up uh, pretty well. I'll polish it up later on. Okay guys, that's it for the first video in the series. That's all I have time for at this point in time. I'll bring you guys back as uh, time permits and I'm in the shop. We'll start getting some of the uh, remaining capacitors, the resistors checked and replaced as needed. And continuing the uh, cleaning on the chassis as well. I'm going to forego testing the IF transformers at this point. We'll just take a, a chance that they're good. If they're problematic, we'll deal with that when we get to that part in the uh, restoration and or power-up. Thanks for watching.